Welcome heroes to another Unity VR chat tutorial. Today, I'm gonna to be covering the animation lock. What is the animation lock? Well, it's when you play an animation and it locks it in play so that way when, uh, as you're playing the animation, it doesn't reset when somebody joins or swaps avatars. This may or may not be an issue uh, currently today with uh, how much VR chat has been changing, but it does have its own uses. Essentially what it, uh, this tutorial will allow you to do is once you're done, you'll know how to play an animation via an emote toggle. Uh, there is a toggle that is out there that does the same thing, but I figured I'll show you how to actually do it yourself so that way you could gain an understanding and maybe expand upon it. Before we start, the things that you'll need to know in order to engage in this tutorial is how to do a jester or jester override. Uh, that is the simple how to add like the animator and whatnot. I'll, I'll cover some of the basics, but knowing how these work will help you with this tutorial and also how to do animators because this is pretty much everything that's going to be covered within it. Now in the previous video, we did an animator behavioral toggle. Uh, the one thing is, is that I forgot that you need to make sure to enable the ability to see your animation files. So I wanted to quickly cover how to do this. So uh, maybe we can clear that confusion. By the way, the how to do that as well is in the, in that video is in the um, description. Uh, but let's go ahead and cover how to do that in here. So you want to go to edit project settings editor. So from here, you'll go down to the asset serialization right now I have it on force text you might see it on force binary or mixed you want to put it on force text now doing this might cause a massive update so I would recommend before doing this back up your files in case it messes up any of your project files so uh, when doing this what will happen is when you open up an animation file it will now be in text form and not that garbage so the animation I'm going to be using is my cookies animation, which I've shown off here and there in VR chat. This is uh, this is an NSP animation that I, I did that plays to the song cookies. So with uh, with this, I just want to show like some of the aspects that are within this so you can kind of understand what I, I'm working off of. So I have a, a sprite spawner, which will summon all the individual sprites that will show up in the background. I got one that show that spawns Ninja Brian. Uh, some rigid body controls and uh, some things on the head and whatnot. Also, the, the animation will also cause materials to spawn. I just wanted to give you a quick rundown about what animation I'm working with because it's easier to have something that's already created to show you how to, how to get this to work. You don't necessarily need to do this. If you have an animation that's already created, you can apply the animation lock to play it and not have to worry about holding an emote or having somebody reset your animation. So to begin, what we need to do is we need to have something that will actually toggle your animation on. Now this will be very familiar uh, in comparison to the last video uh, where I had animation states played, but I do it a little bit differently in order to get this toggle to work. First off, what we need to do is add an animator. On, uh, I add the animator on the armature here specifically because what this will allow me to do is control everything within my object. You don't necessarily have to do it on the uh, on the armature. You could put it on other parts of the, the character, but just remember that you can only control everything that is a child of that game object. So with the animator in there, we also need a controller. So let's go ahead and create that. Animator controller, call it a tutorial controller. The naming convention doesn't really matter. You can call it whatever you want, but you know, name it something that you will re remember. Okay, so now it has a controller. And the next thing that we need to do is create an animation off this controller. Now, I have the animation tab here. Uh, just one, one thing that I wanted to point out, I have a lot of my tabs already here. If you don't have them, you can just go to window and add it. And then you'll have like the animator. You'll usually it'll pop up something like this. Just drag it down and just, you know, add it to your tabs. It's, it makes it way easier to actually be able to edit them just being, being there. All right, so well, let's go ahead and create the animation. Uh, so this is gonna be the thing that will transform my avatar. Essentially, this will transform it to the states that I want it to be in. So we'll just call this transform. Now with this, what I want is I want to make sure to add all of the elements that are going to turn on and off. So a quick way to do that is you click the record button here. 
and then anything that you change it's gonna add automatically into there you, you can't necessarily do that with everything like for example if you already have an animator it's going to automatically switch over to that animator rather than um, allowing you to edit it so th at that point you might have to go to add properties and then find it in your hierarchy and add it add the enables or whatnot just a little quick tip there uh, th there's many ways to actually like add these and whatnot uh, this is not necessarily important to how to add an animation lock just note that in the this particular animation what you need to do is set everything into the state that it's going to be for when your animation plays so let's see for mine I have the hair turn off so I got a lot of things that will happen uh, I'm gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and get to the the point of this the whole concept of this is that you're gonna have a emote that will play the animator on your armature for a duration now, right now, this when this plays, nothing is going to happen because it's only a one frame. Well, technically, it'll play the one frame and then be done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add another frame on 40, which will do the reverse of everything. So essentially, it will play, activate things. If it continues playing, it'll turn them off. So with that, I'm going to add another frame. The reason why they're far apart, and this is something I'm still experimenting with, is that apparently you can't just do single frame stop and starts. You got to give a little bit of buffer room. 40 seconds might be a little bit long, but it's something I found that works. This this frame right here is just to make sure that there's still something playing after this 40 second point, so you can actually stop within it. Because the concept here is you're going to activate the armature's behavior and then stop. And what that what, uh, when you stop it, you basically disable the arm eh, the animator's behavior. Because you stop the behavior, it's just going to stop here and it'll stay in whatever state it is. If somebody j joins or changes or whatever, it's not going to change what's going on here because it's pretty much locked in this animation. And then to turn it off, the concept is, is to play it and then stop it here and then you've locked it in the off position. Now I'm going to go ahead and just get the, uh, the version I already have on this avatar to play things. As you can see, I have a lot of other things that turn on and switch and whatnot. But as you can see, it turns on, has the material swaps and everything that happens. So it'll lock here uh, when, when we're done with it. And then when I want to turn it off, it'll play and then it'll lock here. So let's go ahead and unclick preview. So that right there is our animator done. Now you're going to want to make sure to turn this off. The reason why is because when you play, it's just going to... Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, make sure your animator's off because what we're going to do is we're going to have a emote toggle that on and off. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create our animation override. If you already have an override for your character, you could just use that. I'm just going to, uh, let's just call it T override. Uh, I'm just going to show real quick how you make one of these. So you got that here, you go ahead and click this little dot here, and then you find the avatar controller template that adds all of your elements here, and then we're just going to add it to the character's uh, override right here. Yeah, my, uh, my Unity likes to be a little bit slow, don't worry about that. Okay, so we got that all set up. Now, of course, when you want to mess with animations, you want to duplicate your avatar, Disable the originals so you don't have to see it and then you can work off of this and not worry about it screwing up your avatar Because uh, that always sucks to get like very far in your your project and then something just horribly goes wrong So with this override done what we're gonna need is we're gonna need an emote so we're gonna go ahead and start by just making a um, the armature behavior toggle now I've done this in the infinite gesture system, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it again in here. So we're gonna call this turn on. Uh, at least what I'm talking about is how to actually create the animation over or the uh, armature behavioral enabler. So do that. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and add it on the override. I usually put on emote three just because reasons. You can put on any emote, it doesn't actually matter. Uh, with that on, let's go ahead and add the override to here. This puts on the base animator so that way we could actually edit it. Uh, now we can go to the animations, turn on. 
And now we're gonna add an enabler on the armature. Oh yeah, that's right. See, this is what I was talking about before. You can't necessarily do the technique of hit record and click every object because if it already has an animator, it's not gonna let you. But a uh, little cheeky way to get around that is just uh, hold control, select both of them, make sure the thing is on, toggle it on and off, and hey presto, we got something to toggle on. Because the thing is, you can't technically disable the game object that the animator is a part of, so it's not actually going to add a key for that, so you don't have to worry about that. Alright, with this created, let's go ahead and edit it. So we got this in here, turn on, we'll open up Visual Studios, and then uh, we'll go ahead and... As in the previous video, what you gotta do is switch the attribute to enabled, or M enabled, and switch the class ID to 8. So that way it targets the behavior and specifically the enabled. I go into this in more detail in the uh, previous video, so I'd highly recommend watching that so you can get a better idea on that. Enabled, class ID 8, save, and there you go. Bob's your uncle. We got a crash. Okay, don't know what happened there, but uh, Unity is a bit of a memory hog, and I assume it just ran out of memory space. Whatever! We got ourselves the Armature Behavioral Enabler. So there we go. Uh, with this, we could actually enable our armature uh, for however long we want. Now, I don't quite, this is a, again, the part I don't 100% understand why this does this, but uh, you can't necessarily enable the armature on one frame and expect it to lock. Uh, I have found a good comfort zone is to enable it for about 10 seconds and then uh, disable it, because basically what's gonna happen is uh, when the emote plays, it'll start the armature behavior, and then at this point, it's gonna turn it off, and it'll be locked in whatever position it was before. So, uh, about 10 seconds seems to be good. It might have something to do with the transition of the base, um, animator, but anyways, turn it on for about 10 seconds, and it'll be locked on the on position. So now that we have it turned on, let's go ahead and duplicate the turn on, so we can turn it off. Because uh, it's actually nice to be able to turn your animations off, who would have thought? Now we go to the override, put the off on next to the on, and then we go back into here, and then we can go into the animation, adjust the off, and what we want to do here is we want this to play past the turn on and off point, or sorry, t the, the turn off point, which if you recall, we have it at 40 seconds. I recommend playing it a little bit past, about 45 seconds, so that way it's guaranteed that it'll be on. I would highly recommend playing with these values to see how much you can shorten them up to, because since it's an emote, the shorter the better. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. The off puts you in the 45 second mark. Just so you know, I'm working in 60 frame samples. I know some of you work in 90 frame samples. If you, if you do that, Definitely start playing around with the values and see what you can get to work. But at this point, we now have a functional animation lock. So let's go ahead and hit play and see it in action. So since it's in play, we go to the animator, uh, hit the parameters, and hit emote 3 in erase. As you can see, it's on. Now we're going to turn it off. Okay, so I think it's just that my Unity is being really slow, so it's hard to actually display this, but there's on and there's off. I didn't actually change anything. Unity is just being kind of slow on my computer at the moment. But there you go, we have a functional animation lock. Now let's go ahead and jump into VR chat and see this baby in action. And now we're in VR chat. Let's see how well this ends up working. So we have this all set up on an emote so we can turn it on and off. See, look, I'll turn it on and then I'll turn it off. You might note that I'm going into the floor. I made sure to not put anything on the animation just to show if you don't put anything on it, then you're going to pretty much go into the floor. So if you want, you can on the turn on animation, the turn off animation, you can add an idol or you can add like an orange justice or whatever the heck that you want to add on to it. Just something that transitions into the turn on and then the turn off phase. 
But yeah, if I were to play this, uh, play this, um, animation, I would pretty much, um, not have it skip, or not skip, it would not restart if somebody were to join, or if somebody were to switch avatars. So, I could just turn it on, it'll play, and things would be good. I could do all my gestures like this, and I can move around, not even worrying about anything. One thing to note, though, is that if you are to do this method, very important notion is that people must be looking at you, or they basically will cull your animation and they won't render for them. So if you're doing any of these big elaborate animations, make sure anybody who is viewing is viewing you directly. All right, that is it. So that is the animation lock. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. I'll be sure to answer them. And if there's anything important enough that must be uh, displayed or whatever, I'll add it to the description below. So if there's any kind of pressing questions, be sure to check the description first. Anyways, guys, thank y'all for watching. Hope y'all enjoyed, and we'll see y'all next time. Take care and goodbye.